This here is a new Jasper Lake mini PC that is powered by the Pentium Silver N600. Now the N600 of the Jasper Lakes is one of the more high-end models. I typically review the N5105. That one has a maximum turbo of 2.8 gigahertz, whereas this more high-end model is 3.3 gigahertz. The Intel UHD graphics has 32 executional units, and the configuration of this Lever Z3 mini PC is eight gigabytes of dual channel RAM, it does have 128 gigabytes of storage, which is eMMC 5.1 spec. It can run two displays at 4K 60, and there is an option to add a PCI 3.0 SSD to this if you wanted to increase upon the storage, or simply have faster storage than eMMC 5.1 spec. In the box of the mini PC, you'll find a quick start guide. We have our power supply. Now this is rated to 65 watts. There is a Visa mount bracket, some screws for that, and a power supply cable. This mini PC has a great compact size, so it's only four centimeters tall, 13 by 13 are the dimensions. We've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, Gigabit LAN, two USB 2 ports. Up the front, there are then three USB Type A's, this is USB 3.0 spec, and then a Type C USB 3 audio jack, microphones, and our power button with status LED. On the left side, there's just a vent right here, and on the right, another vent, but we do have a Kensington lock slot. On the underside, we have four rubber feet with the screws there, so if you remove those, you can then pop off this and take a look at the internals, which I'll get onto shortly, and then we have these two mounting points there for that Visa bracket. The top of this mini PC is made out of plastic. We have their branding right here, and it is a smooth, glossy finish, so it's prone to picking up smudges and fingerprints. It's not really an issue. So the build quality is mostly plastic, the frame all around the outside. It's just the underside where we have the metal. Gaining access to the internals was not difficult at all, so it's just those four screws on the bottom, and then that plate lifts right off. We've got access to our wireless card, so this is just a Wi-Fi 5 card and it has Bluetooth 4. You can upgrade this to a Wi-Fi 6 one with Bluetooth 5 quite easily. And we do have an NVMe drive here, which is great, that M.2 slot is 22 by 80 in size, and then two SODIMM slots here, so you can upgrade that RAM. Now this configuration that I have from them has two four gigabyte sticks in there, so eight gigabytes in total with this DDR4 RAM. So you could easily increase that to 16 gigabytes if you bought yourself and installed, of course, two eight gigabyte sticks there. You'll notice right here that there's this chip, so that's our BWIN chip, that's in fact eMMC storage, and that's where Windows is located. That is the boot drive, but you could easily swap that over and upgrade and put an NVMe drive in this if you wanted more speed. The BIOS of this mini PC is uh, reasonably locked down to us because we don't have a lot of configuration options. For example, there's nothing in here for the power limit, okay? You can adjust, for example, a few things to do with the graphics, dedicate more memory to that, integrated UHD graphics. There's a tweak setting here, but really there's not a lot that we can change or that I would bother changing. Under advanced settings here, just a few other options, but really nothing we can do, okay, with this that would be of any interest. Power limits would have been good to increase it from six watts to 10. And on first boot into Windows, we do have the following pre-installed language packs. We've got English, Spanish, French, uh, Korean, and Chinese. This tiny little mini PC is running that passively cooled Pentium Silver N6000. So the maximum turbo of this Jasper Lake is 3.3 gigahertz. So it's a lot faster than the other models that I'm reviewing, but it still is just a six what part there with its power limit one and power limit two can the short boost go up to 20 watts so that turbo does help it being 500 megahertz more so a little bit more performance than those other models i review but we're still kind of being capped really with that six watts there with the performance it can't hold those turbos for very long because it's going to use too much wattage there so it ends up powering down a little bit now just to point out the memory yes it is definitely in dual channel and we're running a slower speed here because 2,666 megahertz is not actually the fastest the Jasper Lake can run, which is 2,933. So we're missing out on a little bit there of RAM bandwidth. The performance could be a bit better, but if you upgraded the RAM, certainly go for the faster RAM if you wanted to. And I would put 16 gigabytes in this, which would aid the performance. The key bottleneck really with this system so far is this, the 
Internal storage is an eMMC 5.1 flash, NAD flash there. And you can see that that's lower than SATA 3 speeds out of a SATA 3 SSD, which these typically would come configured with. But the good thing about it is, as I pointed out when we took a look at the internals, that it does have a PCI 3.0 slot. So you can get really fast speeds out of that. Maximum PCI 3.0 speeds much quicker than this. And that's what I would probably do for my boot operating system. I would run it not off the embedded storage here, but PCI3 to get over these speeds here and get past that bottleneck. Now our Wi-Fi chip in this is very common here. So it's Intel's Wi-Fi AC3165, Bluetooth 4. I would upgrade this personally. If I was gonna be keeping this unit, I would put in a Bluetooth um, five card combo card with Wi-Fi 6. Something like the Intel AX200 would be perfect in this. You get much quicker speeds. As it is, my throughput through this is about 320 megabits per second, which is eh, not amazing, but we do have Realtek gigabit LAN there. This PC does come with Windows 10 Pro installed and you can upgrade to Windows 11. It has the TPM module 2.0, that's fine. So you're able to upgrade it if you wanted to. And synthetic benchmarks, I won't focus a lot on these. So just this, Geekbench 5 score here. The single core scores over 400 points, multi-core scores over 1,000. And yes, that is faster than the Jasper Lake N5105, which I have reviewed a few mini PCs and some other tech with that one. So that turbo performance being 500 megahertz faster than that particular model, single core especially there, does show it, it can pull slightly higher scores here. Now, if we had the slightly faster RAM, it could do even better there with the score. Now I do have the latest drivers here and you can see that I have installed Windows 11. I've tested it out that yes, it can be upgraded and it will run Windows 11, not a problem. And the display can be run at 4K 60, which is what I'm currently doing now. You'll see here the display resolution, that's 4K and the refresh rate, that is, here we go, 60 Hertz. So that is possible. But how does it handle 4K demanding files? So the Jellyfish file here, there's my test file that I always test out. This is 4K and it is a 10-bit file. And a few starters in the beginning, which I commonly see with this bit rate, but once it's going, you can see now that that is fluid. So it's not dropping any frames anymore. But minimizing it there, that can be a little bit laggy. I've seen this throughout the UI, throughout Windows here that it sometimes has just a few little stutters. So what about 4K60 now? This is where things get quite demanding. It's initially slow to load and I can see that that is not 60 frames per second. That is looking a little bit laggy there. So the Intel UHD graphics is struggling to the point where it just froze completely and it's still dropping frames. Although it's looking a little better, I'll just seek ahead. That was slow. And no, that's still dropping frames. So 4K30, it can handle, but not 4K60. It's just too demanding for this spec of mini PC. Documents and spreadsheets, however. So this is a spreadsheet that's got 700 records here. It's fast. You can do your edits and it doesn't really lag out at all there. It's not bogging itself down. So for just general kind of office work for browsing the internet, Documents, spreadsheets, stuff like that is really all this spec is good at. It wouldn't do anything too demanding on this. Then Chrome tabs, you can have about 10 open. I'll do a very quick test. This is my little search for cats that I do on this lower spec tech. And I've got the performance monitor up here with Windows, just so we can keep an eye on that RAM use and how demanding this is really actually going to be on it. It will max out. You'll see that the CPU was going to max out at 100% under this kind of workload, even just something as simple as Chrome here. So we'll open up a few tabs and some of those tabs will have embedded videos in them. And that's what I want. I want to see how it is going to perform. So still hasn't actually peaked there. That's interesting. At 100, the CPU, the RAM is still looking okay. So I think I've got enough tabs open at the moment here that I'll swap between them and we'll see how this is going to load in. So. It's a little slow. This performance is not a Core i5, a Core i7. I even say a 10th gen, 11th gen, or 8th gen would be a lot quicker than this. But it's not too bad. You see, as I swap over these pages, that's still loading in. So part of the slowness could actually be my internet connection, which is uh, not exactly the best. And I'm starting to see now that when I scroll through these pages, 
there is a little bit of choppiness. You can see when the images come in and it feels a little slow there, but it's it's doing okay, not too bad. All right, that's still loading. So this is where it's getting a bit slow, is loading in these embedded videos here. So that's YouTube, just a trailer there for cats and it's another video. So that's where it's bogging down a little. So you can have ideally around eight, 10 tabs open and you've still got plenty of RAM to play with and this performance, all right, just a little choppy. So I have a look now at some YouTube 4K. Now through Chrome here, streaming YouTube at 4K 30, you can see that it is steady, it is fine. Now it did originally drop 22 frames, just loading it up, opening up the window. There were a few stutters, a few little lags. Once it gets going, like the video clips, the footage here is steady, but occasionally it is dropping a frame here and there. So to me, this is still watchable. Now, if you try 4K 60, it isn't, all right? It turns into a bit of a choppy mess. And I personally would not be playing back 4K 60 with this mini PC. It's just simply not powerful enough to be able to handle that. Very quick look now at gaming performance. I do have it set on the lowest possible settings with Counter-Strike and it's 720p, but this performance is very choppy and only around 20 frames per second. So you need to lower it down probably to something like 800 times 600. I'm just gonna jump in here all crazy. <sighs> See if I could get a kill. It's so laggy that I don't even know how you'd be able to aim properly with this. Try that again. I know, you shouldn't jump around. Look at them all. They still can't even hit me. All right, so I'm dead there. But that just gives you an idea that it's not good at all. They're only well, down to about 11, 12 frames per second. And I do believe I know why it's running into those laggy, throttling kind of issues where its performance is definitely not ideal. It's because of this. It is reaching temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius. And this, yes, is after pushing it hard for a little while and it's peaking around 10 watts there that it's pulling. So imagine if this did have a power limit, one of 10 watts, not the six, it would get a lot hotter this. Now the odd thing is it doesn't say it has triggered thermal throttling, but it must only be a few degrees away from that. But I believe that these temperatures are still causing the clocks to drop down. So that's why I'm seeing um, stutter and lag throughout this mini PC, my time using it, that unless you're doing something very light, it will run into performance issues there, which is not good. So it really does need to have a little active cooler in there, a little fan inside this and not just all be passively cooled. So disappointing the thermals here with this mini PC. Now, if you're looking at running Linux on this, I can happily report that it's working fine thanks to, well, using an older Wi-Fi chipset. There's no issues with drivers and everything will run fine as long as you go for a more modern distro, of course, with your Linux build. I did find that the performance was better than Windows, but it will still run into what is the big bottleneck with this particular model is the thermals, that it's simply getting too hot. It reaches 100 degrees Celsius. It will in fact go up to 101, 102. It triggers thermal throttling. It's getting hot. It's affecting the performance. So there is some lag that's coming into it when you start to push this model. If you want to have 10 Chrome tabs open, you got still available RAM. The CPU load seems to be fine, but it's being throttled. It's affecting the performance, as I saw in gaming that really should have performed a lot better Counter-Strike with the 32 ex executional units that this model has, it simply wasn't performing as it should for this spec considering the higher clocks, the higher turbos that it does have compared to say other Jasper Lake models that I have covered. Now it is good that we can run two 4K monitors. I like that. I like the fact that you're able to upgrade the wireless card which is Wi-Fi 5 spec. It really should have shipped with the Intel AX200 or 201 Wi-Fi 6 spec with Bluetooth 5 because it's a bit dated now getting this. And it also ships out with Windows 10 Pro, which I feel should be Windows 11 Pro or Windows 11 Home would have been perfect considering it's, well, it's now the days of Windows 11, so it should really have it. So overall, this model is good for just light computing, but if you push it hard and you want to really maximize and just do a lot of multitasking with it, it then starts to choke, sadly. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Lever, the Z3 Mini PC.